Hello everyone, uh, it's been a while. Uh, here's a new case. Uh, this is uh, a case that's good for radiology residents, uh, but I'll also throw a few uh, basic uh, pointers uh, for uh, juniors as well. So this is a 60-year-old female patient. The main abnormalities are involving the liver. This is the liver here, which is totally abnormal. And uh, the abnormalities of the liver are in the uh, form of, first, a very irregular and nodular hepatic contour. This is the first thing that we have to keep in mind. Normal livers have a very smooth contour. The second abnormality of the liver is that the liver itself is smaller in size. There is volume loss or shrunken liver. A normal liver is typically uh, more sizable than what you see here. A third abnormality to keep an eye on is the heterogeneous appearance of the liver. That's mainly uh, due to uh, multifocal hypodense uh, lesions. You see all these rounded or relatively rounded uh, lesions that are scattered throughout the liver parenchyma. A normal liver should appear homogeneous. Uh, finally, there is uh, fluid around the liver consistent with ascites. The constellation of findings of an irregular hepatic contour, a small liver which is shrunken in some of its uh, segments, the presence of ascites, and these uh, multifocal lesions that may represent hepatocellular carcinoma should all raise the possibility of chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. However, the case is uh, more exciting than that, and that's why I'm showing this today. This is the CT of the same patient one year ago. Apart from this focus here, which turned out to be a benign hemangioma, the liver looks really different than what we saw on the uh, most recent examination. First of all, you have a normal, very smooth contour of the liver. Second, the liver itself is very homogeneous and has no heterogeneous uh, density or focal lesions apart from this benign uh, hemangioma. Third, the size of the liver is very different. You saw how the liver had a smaller size when it looked totally abnormal. Here the liver has a uh, very reasonable size. And finally, you don't have uh, associated ascites. So this one year ago CT was uh, actually performed at the time uh, on this patient when she had uh, recently resected axillary lymph nodes and a uh, left breast cancer. You could see these uh, soft tissue changes within the left breast related to the uh, surgical intervention. On another CT a few months later, the patient unfortunately developed a metastatic focus. This is new, was not seen before, and uh, she underwent uh, intensive uh, chemotherapy. After chemotherapy, this is what happened to the liver in a span of a few months. One thing uh, to keep in mind that uh, chronic liver disease does not give you a change in hepatic appearance in such a quick uh, period. Uh, usually, whether it's viral hepatitis or alcoholic hepatitis or others, it takes time for the liver to become shrunken and gives you a regular contour in addition to the secondary findings of chronic liver disease. In this case, the progression was so quick and it was related to treatment and chemotherapy. So the diagnosis here is uh, actually, rather than being cirrhosis, is called pseudocirrhosis, which is uh, an entity that's classically associated with uh, chemotherapeutic uh, treatment of diffuse hepatic metastasis, 
And the most famous uh, primary that is associated with such appearance is actually uh, breast adenocarcinoma metastasis to the liver. So what did we learn from this case? For juniors, we learned that a normal liver should have a smooth contour, a reasonable size, and a homogeneous density. We also learned that an irregular contour, a shrunken liver, and a heterogeneous density are all features of liver cirrhosis. But we also learned the uh, pitfall of pseudocirrhosis, which is uh, the hepatic appearance that you might encounter after uh, seeing a patient who had diffuse uh, hepatic metastasis treated with chemotherapy, specifically from uh, breast cancer. So don't forget that. That's it for today's case. Uh, thanks for watching. If you find this useful, please spread the word about the uh, Radiology Bits accounts. And uh, please uh, don't shy away from sending any uh, comments or feedback. See you with more cases later. Welcome everybody. Here's a new case. Uh, this is an adult uh, female patient who recently had uh, a uh, bariatric uh, surgical procedure. The patient uh, presents uh, currently with vague abdominal pain. Although the teaching uh, from this case would be most useful for radiology residents and uh, surgical residents, uh, this would be a good case for both the senior and junior audience alike. Since the patient had a recent uh, sleeve gastrectomy, you could see the surgical uh, bright suture line here uh, and uh, what looks like a remaining uh, small stomach that connects normally to the duodenum and the rest of the bowel loops. There are several complications to look for after bariatric surgery. One of the common uh, complications uh, is actually that of a, a surgical site leak. Um, and this is why we did this examination without giving IV contrast. We only gave oral contrast to see if there is a leakage of contrast from the uh, surgical site outside of the expected locations. And as you see, this is not the case here. So everything seems to be contained within the bowel loops. Now, if you're looking at CT scans without intravenous or sufficient oral contrast, it might be very difficult to uh, follow the bowel loops, but that's something that you have to do on every CT scan of the abdomen. Make sure every bowel loop is accounted for. As explained before, this is the distal stomach connecting to the duodenum, which then connects to the duodenal bowel loops. Uh, here you could see part of uh, the uh, fecal uh, filled uh, lumen of the uh, colon. Uh, in particular, this is the hepatic flexure. As part of your routine assessment, you want to make sure that the bowel loops are connected normally. So this here is, as we mentioned, the hepatic flexure. It connects uh, normally to the uh, more distal transverse colon. See where it connects here. If you do the same thing in the opposite direction, you'll notice that the colon connects normally to the cecum below here. Having explained the loops in the area of interest, I'll guide your attention to this area here. Although this area appears closely related to the colon, it's obviously not connected to the colon or to the small bowel loops. If you look at it carefully, although it appears relatively well defined, there is a little bit of fat stranding around it, this dirty fat appearance. The region of interest here shows an internal heterogeneous uh, density with areas that look a little bit bubbly as you see here and there. And it does not have a clear cut wall that denotes a mucosal wall such as you, what you see with uh, small or large bowel loops. Finally, it has this uh, twisting, hyperdense metallic linear uh, component. So the close proximity to the bowel loops might have confused us for bowel loop initially. 
another finding is that this heterogeneous bubbly appearance uh, might have confused us for fecal material or uh, material within uh, the lumen of a small bowel loop. But now we know that this is disconnected from all of that. Given all the described features, the appearance uh, is consistent with a forgotten surgical sponge. And uh, these surgical gauzes or sponges uh, have these uh, radiopaque uh, markers that could be easily identified on radiographs or on a CT scan. If uh, such a uh, foreign body is not removed, it could lead to many complications, including uh, acute infection, formation of abscess, uh, adhesions with subsequent uh, bowel obstruction, and other undesired uh, sequelae. Since we have many funny names in medicine, this entity has a weird name of its own. It's called a Gossy Pipoma, which means uh, a contained uh, area of uh, cotton. Gossy Pipoma. So remember, one of the complications of any surgery is uh, forgetting uh, surgical material within the abdomen, and that's why uh, the surgical team uh, would always form a uh, sponge or gauze count. Uh, also remember that such uh, a foreign body may mimic many things including bowel loops, uh, abscesses, uh, phlegmons, uh, or neoplasms. So keep that in mind when checking such cases. And before we finish the case, uh, you probably have noticed this uh, incidental finding here. Uh, what do you think this uh, finding represents? This is also a uh, quiz question that we posted uh, on our Twitter account. Um, you could either uh, check it out there or answer here. If you think this was useful, please uh, support the account, uh, whether on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, uh, YouTube, or Radbit's website as well. And we'll see you with more cases later.